treaties. Let's turn up the heat. Stay tuned for personal travel recommendations and a tasty cooking demo. Roll that intro. and welcome to my channel where we explore travel destinations and the eats that go with them. Today, we are going to talk about a popular vegetarian dish that is highly aromatic with flavorful ingredients. It is high in protein, high in iron, and high in heat for my spicy food lovers. This dish is nothing close to boring and it is something that you will want to add to your weekly meal prep rotation. But before we get started, remember to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so that you never miss a video. Let's get started. Asmara Eritrea, a city dedicated to today's guests. Top things to do when visiting Asmara include doing some shopping at the Metabar Market, visiting the World Heritage Site of the Church of Our Lady of the Rosary, and taking a day trip to Masawa. Today's guest is my wonderful friend, Sabrina. She is the co-founder of a nonprofit that focuses on the awareness of mental and physical health within the minority community. She is an Eritrean native where spicy and hot foods are the norm. Come on over, Sabrina. Hello. Hi, Sabrina. How are you? Good, how are you? I'm excited to learn all about your dish. So the dish is called a miso wet. It's a vegetarian dish. The main ingredients, mostly for any Eritrean dish, is gonna be an onion and tomato base. We um, pre-prepared, mm -hmm. so we put them in the blender or a processor, if you have a processor, and chop them really finely so that they are um, ready to go right into the dish. Our here. main ingredient here is gonna be berbera. Um, this is going to be a spice that my grandma prefers to get from back home, but some markets here in America actually sell it. Whole Foods, I know, carries it, but it's basically kind of like a cayenne pepper twist off. It's very spicy, um, but most times we try to get it from back home to get that like authentic mixture. Okay. And then we have the, I guess the key ingredient mm -hmm. of this dish is going to be the red lentils yep. here. So, you know, we have green lentils, black lentils, yellow lentils, but here is the main um, lentil that we're going to use are the red lentils. Um, is, is it possible to use other types of lentils or um, would you just stick to, to those? We try to stick to the red lentils mm -hmm. for this dish. Um, there are other varieties of this red lentil dish to make it non-spicy. Okay. Um, and you could use green lentils for that. Dish. Okay. But awesome. for this one, gotta use the red one. You gotta <laughs> use the red one. Okay. And then we have some garlic here that we've pre-chopped and a little bit of tomato paste. Is there anything else that you would recommend our watchers do prior to cooking this dish? Yes, so for the red lentils here, um, you can see that they're extra clean. Okay. <laughs> because you gotta let it soak in some water for a long time, maybe like an hour or two, um, mm -hmm. just to get like that coating out of it. Okay. Um, Cause it does leave a little taste and just kind of like, you know, scrub it out and just play with it with your hands mm -hmm. until it gets to that color. Okay. So similar to other beans where you would need it to sit a couple of hours before you cook it. So like a typical bean, you would want it to sit overnight. But for lentils, it's not required that you pre-soak them for other dishes but for this dish you want to soak them one to two hours beforehand and then rinse them like you would rinse like a mm -hmm. rice or something like that so that you're getting you know them as clean as possible so that the true flavor comes through for the dish yep. I would say like recommend um, just wait for the water to kind of get rid of that foggy looking that foggy looking so clean them clean them clean them until the water is clear so Let's get started. Let's get started. All right. So we're gonna start, I know in American dishes, we usually start with the oil and the onion and let it saute, but here we kind of actually use the onions first and let it sit for a few minutes, kind of let the water soak out of it a little bit. Okay. And then we add in the oil. So how much do you think that would be like? 
I would say maybe like a quarter of a cup maybe. Yeah, I would say. And you kind of add some as you go too if you're starting to see it dry a little bit. Okay. The oil is coating all of the onions. They look nice and moist. Mm -hmm. You could just, if you could smell it right now. Yeah. We're just going to add the barbara. So this is the season um, with all the mixtured goodness in there. So you put in as much as you can tolerate. Mm -hmm. I love spices, so I can like, I don't measure how much I put. Mm -hmm. um, but it's recommended to try to put like two tablespoons. Okay. So we're caramelizing the onions with the um, barbea. The barbea, yes. Barbea, barbea. <laughs> and then we're gonna add the garlic, the chopped garlic in there. And that's about three cloves of garlic chopped up. And you can also see here that it's already soaking up the oil a little bit. Okay. So we're actually gonna add a little bit more oil. Okay. And if it's cooking too fast, like this is cooking too fast, so we turn down the heat a little bit so that the oil isn't getting absorbed as quickly. Yeah, and this is the base to like any, a lot of our stews that we eat with injera. Like the base, it just soaks all the flavor up. And then we're gonna just let it sit for a little bit, and then we're gonna go ahead and add the tomatoes. Looks nice and caramelized here. So what next? So next is going to be the tomatoes. Okay. So this was two whole large tomatoes yes. put in the blender and then equated to about two and a half cups of chopped tomato. And like previously stated, this is basically the base to any Eritrean Ethiopian stew. Um, any of the spicy stews, we start off with the onion, the tomato, and after these steps are what like changes within the different um, stews in Eritrea and Ethiopia. So here, again, it's gonna be a waiting game. So we're gonna <laughs> let it sit for a little bit, probably 10 minutes again. So we want it to come to a simmer and then we will come back to add the lentils, correct? Yep. Okay. Okay, so we like to have a little fun with each of our guests by doing rapid trivia. You get 25 seconds to answer as many questions as possible. Are you ready? Ready as can be. <laughs> what is the capital of Eritrea? Asmara. What is the common spoken language in Africa? Ah, oh, Africa, I got you with Eritrea, Tigria. <laughs> oh, French, I think. Are lentils a fruit or vegetable? Vegetable. Fill in the blank. Lentils come in colors that range from yellow to red to green, brown, and what color? You got all the colors. Red, <laughs> yellow, green. Brown. Stop. <laughs> you got all the colors. No. We don't know. Black. Oh, there's black lentils? Yeah. In what world? Okay, so we've been simmering all of the ingredients. So we have the onions in here. We have the garlic in here. We have the tomatoes in here. The olive oil in here, and it's been simmering for about like 10, 10 to, 15. to 15 or so minutes. Mm -hmm. So you reach this nice gooey consistency here. The aroma is outstanding. So we're gonna add some seasoning now, and then we're gonna add the lentils. Yep, we're almost done. Pinch a little bit of salt in here. Not too much, because the berbera, uh, keep in mind, has some of this in there already. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to overbear it. So we added about five pinches of salt, two pinches of pepper. We're gonna add about two and a half cups of freshly soaked lentils. Get the flavor all in. And um, we also have some boiling water ready so that we can kind of add it in here so it can boil with the flavor. So we're gonna go ahead and just kind of get the water. It's kind of like a rice to um, water ratio. Um, why is it that we're using hot water instead of like a normal temperature water? Yeah, um, so since you put the lentils in with the onions and tomatoes and kind of let it sit there, if you put cold water with it, it'll take longer for it gotcha. to kind of boil okay. and it'll take longer for it to soak in that flavor. So okay. I prefer kind of pass down for my grandma, mm -hmm. um, easy way out and kind of boiling it on the side so it's ready. This is more of like the vegan version. 
Um, because in our culture, there are times where we have to fast for like Lent and stuff. And for that, we go like completely vegan. So like this is one of the easiest dishes to make. But when it's not fasting season, you want to kind of get that comfort, you know, taste to it. We add some butter and we do have a special butter, um, but you can obviously just use regular butter as well. But ours is called kebe. So they kind of like melt all the butter. It's kind of like garlic butter kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Season it up and kind of like, you know, put it in the freezer. So when times like this, they can just kind of drop it in there. And you're just gonna let it and sit and soak in that flavor, probably for 30 minutes, honestly, I would say. But I would also, just keep checking on it regularly, add some water in it so it's not too dry at the end. So we have a final dish here. Sabrina, tell us a little bit more about what's on this plate. Yes, so we have the final finished product of the mister on um, the middle of the plate. And right here we have something called injera. So this is like kind of like a flatbread that we use to eat with all of our stews. Anything like vegetarian, regular meat dishes, this will be always be found underneath the stew. And we kind of use that to grab onto the stew. So you call this mysterious typically referred to as a stew? Yeah. Okay. So um, I would say like any dish that we make, honestly, in Eritrean or Ethiopia, it's a stew. And you kind of put it on top of that injera. And there okay. you have it. What would you typically serve with? this we eat this more during like fasting season um like lent for instance and our lent is a little bit different where we kind of go completely vegan during the 40 days um so with this you kind of match it with all the other vegan pairings like whenever you go to a restaurant and you ask for a vegetarian dish they kind of give you little stews that i mentioned of like we have cabbage um collard greens there's different variations of this dish so like less spicy ones um maybe like yellow lentils type of thing um potato dishes there's a whole bunch of other stews that you can kind of mash this up with okay so are you ready for the first bite go ahead <laughs> so let me know if i'm doing this correctly so you're gonna want to rip the injera mm -hmm. here form like a little pocket and grab up some of the masseur and got it Spicy, it's but it's spicy. not like too, it's not overwhelming. Yeah, I usually make mine extremely spicy where I kind of add it like it's more of an orange undertone right now. So I make mine like bright red. So I put like a lot, a lot of, of spice. tablespoons of, mm -hmm. yeah, the pepper. I don't even measure it. We didn't add tomato paste in here. Mm -hmm. When would you add the tomato paste? Um, I usually kind of just try to see what the onion to tomato ratio is like. If it seems like, you know, the two tomatoes that I put in there don't really look enough, to be honest, I kind of add a little bit of the paste in there just to kind of give it that red color that we're looking for. So should it be one for one ratio? Yeah. Or, okay. So I guess if you don't have enough onions to match your tomatoes in a one for one ratio, you're gonna wanna add the tomato paste to give it that red full color. Mm -hmm. And I would say like if you're not more of a spicy, like for this one, I put a lot of tomatoes in there um, just in case like it was a little too spicy. Cause like I said, my spice level <laughs> tolerance is a little too high. Um, so if you want it more of like that mild taste, you kind of just add that little tomato paste into it. Okay. Mm, that's good. So tell us, why are we eating it? Right. Yeah, so anywhere you go, like any restaurants or even when you just kind of visit family, we try to keep it in like a traditional plate type of thing mm -hmm. with all the different stews in the middle of the injera. And you go in um, with that, it just kind of establishes like you're eating together, that community-based feeling. Thanks Sabrina so much for being on the show. This was a delicious dish. Tell us a little bit more about where we can follow you and learn more about Good Enough. Yes, first, thank you so much for having me. I can't wait to see all the other dishes that you bring onto the show. Um, if you want to give Good Enough a follow, we have an Instagram and Twitter account at goodenough underscore NP. Thanks, 
for watching. Remember to like, subscribe, share, and follow me on Instagram at Treat Talk. I'll see you next time, but until then, keep on treating.